I didn't grow up eating Mexican food. There was no, there was literally never a chili in my house uh, <laughs> when I when I grew up. So, um, and I didn't have any experience cooking Mexican food. But I, I moved to Mexico Mexico in um, the early '90s. Took you know, I started to really love Mexican food. It didn't happen at first. It. Uh, you know, because I didn't eat spicy food, no one in my family did, so it was, at first it was just hot and I didn't know, you know, how am I ever going to live here, I can't eat this. Hola y buenvenidos. Welcome to Mole Mama Cooking with Love. You're about to join us for our weekly adventure where we chat with entrepreneurs, chefs, and food bloggers who are helping us to connect, be inspired, and learn. And for Mother Teresa, spread love everywhere you go and let no one ever come to you without leaving happier. So that's the goal of every show of ours. And given who our guest is today, you are going to be leaving hungry, I'm sure, wanting to cook some homemade Mexican food or run out and find some close by. I'm super excited because we have Douglas Cullen today from the Mexican Food Journal. This is an amazing food blog. I found it probably about six months ago on Instagram, and I loved his feed. And then I found out that he has this entire website that has all these Mexican recipes that are pretty authentic. And he gives you really great instructions on how to cook our food. And they're simple and they're easy. And if you mess up, he even gives you tips on how to fix them. So I am thrilled that he's here with us. He lived in Mexico for over 20 years in San Miguel de Allende, Puerto Vallarta, Monterrey, and Durango. So with that, welcome Douglas. Hello, how are you? I'm good. It's so great to have you here. So can you tell our listeners a little bit more about the Mexican Food Journal and how you started it, why you started it? Uh, Sure. I mean, it's a Mexican food blog, and I started it with um, posting recipes uh, for Mexican food as as I learned in Mexico. Um, I didn't grow up eating Mexican food. There was no, there was literally never a chili in my house um, <laughs> when I when I grew up so um, and I didn't have any experience cooking Mexican food but I, I moved to Mexican Mexico in um, the early 90s and um, so little by little I've, I've always liked to cook um, and so over time I I Took, yeah, I started to really love Mexican food. It didn't happen at first, it, uh, you know, because I didn't eat spicy food. No one in my family did. So it was at first it was just hot and I didn't know, you know, how am I ever going to live here? I can't eat this. And over time I started to think, oh, okay, I'm, you know, I, I, I can tolerate a little more. First it was just to tolerate. And, um, but you know, I, and as I was living there, and I was, I, I learned how to cook, and so you know, I want to share for people um, how to make dishes that may Mexican dishes that maybe they're not real familiar with the cooking techniques or the ingredients, but perhaps they've had um, they've had before in their travels, or they've gone to a restaurant that they like, um, and I really made. I, similar to someone like me that has no experience. So like, as you mentioned in the intro that we have a lot of step-by-step, I think we probably do more, more step-by-step photos on almost any food blog. Uh, so people can easily recreate it. Um, I hope that answers your question there. No, it, it absolutely does. So was there, when you were learning to like Mexican food, was there a crossover food like a tortilla or maybe some frijoles or arroz? Uh, a crossover or food? Well, actually, you like, kind of went, oh yeah, I can, I can like this maybe a little bit more. Well, you know, you start, you start with probably the crossover food would be would be tacos. You can, you know, order, okay. you know, tacos de bistec, tacos de carne asada, or something like that, and you know, put, you know, you don't spoon salsa on or pour it on you you put you know a drop of salsa and you know little by little you know from putting a couple drops on to you know you know putting you know 
nice big spoonful on it. Um, but yeah, I would say tacos would have been the crossover food. Okay. All right. I was just curious because you said, you know, something happened. So I was, I wanted to know more about that. Right. I, I can even, I remember with my, the first dish when I kind of was really living in Mexico, um, I went, I went to Durango. They took us, uh, the, I was teaching at a school in Durango and they took all the new teachers for breakfast and I ordered huevos rancheros and it just about blew my head off. You know, the salsa for me was, it probably wasn't that spicy, but for me it was, was just so spicy. And, um, you know, I, I can't do this, but, um, over, over time, I actually start little by little, you know, putting a little bit of first, anything with chili in it, the only distinguishable flavor was hot. And, and then, you know, by uh, tasting different salsas, you start to the different chilies actually have different flavors and, you know, little by little, I could distinguish them and sort of little by little, I eased my way into it. And, um, I pro you know, it was probably a couple months to where it's like, okay, I'm getting used to this now. This is all right. You know, but well, I, think, I think it's wonderful that you stuck with it, that you kept trying a little bit and you didn't just say, uh, not for me. Well, so. I didn't really have a choice. <laughs> yeah. There were, I was in I was in Durango and there wasn't there really weren't a lot of options you know other than Mexican and um, you know for the the food was, in Durango was really good they had great tacos and um, and there was one one really nice restaurant that everybody loved and I I think it's still there I think it was called La Casa de la Tia Chona in in Durango. And so, yeah, it's somewhere, it's probably two months, I don't know, two months, three months, it was, you know, I was starting to understand the food a little bit more. And there were a lot of dishes I'd never tried. And, you know, so, so, um, but yeah. And so today, what are your most popular recipes on your blog? Our most popular recipes are, I think, right, Salsa Verde. Uh, sopa de fideo, or uh, pozole recipes popular, uh, um, kind of uh, kind of like all the classic Mexican dishes. Okay. You know, the, the, all the salsa recipes are popular, and um, and I would say a lot of the recipes are things that people grew up eating. You know, sopa de fideo that was you know everybody's mom makes that for lunch. And so can you tell our listeners what that is? Because I know that um, we, we have we some, we have some non-Latino listeners that have maybe never heard of that before. Oh, okay. Yeah, like sopa de fideos uh, is uh, like a lunchtime soup. Um, and it's it uh, has a light tomato broth. It's kind of uh, with, they call them fideos, but, it, you know, think of it as sort of a thin, you know, thin spaghetti broken up into um, into little, you know, one-inch pieces, you know, sort of a, a pasta soup with a tomato base and perhaps a little bit of chicken broth in it. Um, and it's a real homey, uh, it's sort of, I, I always refer to it sort of, it's the sort of the tomato soup, you know, you'd have a, a tomato soup for lunch in, in the U.S., you know, sort of an old-timey lunch food. I agree with you. That's a really good way to explain it. It's it's something that I grew up, like you said, eating all the time. My, my sons loved it when they were growing up. It's um, So and do you, do, you, do you find that people, when they come to your blog, are they surprised by some of the dishes and just the diversity of the Mexican cuisine that you're showing? Uh, yeah, I think, I think overall, I mean, Mexican food is eaten in Mexico. Uh, you know, it's, it's a bit different than, than you know, Mexican food um, that most people find in the States. Um, so uh, I think the, the dishes that we have like a, uh, a good recipe for a, um, chiles en nogada, which is basically a stuffed poblano chili and it has a, a, a pork filling and it, it's, it's a stuffed, it's a kind of a fairly large green stuffed chili and it has a, uh, a nogada is actually, would be nougat. It's actually a walnut cream sauce on it. Um, those kind of dishes, um, 
for a lot of people, you know, that's a little bit outside of what the, what maybe they've tried before. Um, and I think overall, the great majority of the recipes probably are familiar to a lot of people. Uh, you know, lots and lots of salsa recipes because you can't have Mexican food without salsa. You can't. And, and you know, there's a, a lot of soup recipes, um, you know, some taco recipes. But off the top of my head, we've got a few, you know, we've got a few things that would be, it here would be quite a bit different. Um, like a, an agua fresca made with a sour cactus fruit. And that's something. Oh, I've never that, heard of that. Wow. Yeah. So it's really good. So if you've had, you know, the, the aguas frescas, I mean, the aguas in Mexico, the, there's a million different ways, you know, whatever fresh fruit, you can make fruit water. Um, and so where we were in San Miguel Leyenda, they have a cactus fruit um, similar to like a, a prickly pear cactus fruit called a choconostle. And it's more of a, it's a sour cactus fruit, but it makes a really tangy um, agua fresca. And so there are some things with some ingredients that are, are a little bit, you know, less common in the U.S., but probably overall, I mean, everything's pr pretty familiar. Well, I know that I always get asked because of mole, like a lot of people are surprised to learn that there are so many varieties of mole. Right. Yeah, mole is always, ah, the chocolate sauce. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and that would be the mole poblano is the most famous one with the chocolate. But there, you know, there's red mole, there's yellow mole, yeah. there's black mole, there's, um, you know, and uh, off the top of my head, like, you know, Oaxaca is the land of seven moles or, you know, right. really, probably 7,000 or 7 million. And every, every town, every family has their take on, you know, their own personal take on mole. Yes, and everybody's is the best. So. And everybody's, is, of course. <laughs> yes. That's, that's always a topic of discussion. Who makes yes. the best mole? Who makes the best salsa? Who makes the best pozole? And, yes. Um, and every town's different, and every town is, you know, very serious about this is the right way to make it. Yes, exactly. <laughs> also true. Okay. Because I think um, I think I was surprised because I grew up in California, but then my mom's family was from Mexico. And when I would go to Mexico um, in different parts, just that there were, there were different ways that people made things. And like you said, everyone's the best and this is the authentic and the real way. And so, um, but that was a large reason why mole mama is because I thought my mother's mole was the best. It was mole rojo. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, but I just, I was amazed when I, in my traveling, just at how many different types of foods there are and how much seafood and so many different seafood dishes. And as you mentioned, so many different types of soups that you can have, even more than I grew up with. Um, yeah, there happen. really are. I mean, there's, there's so many different, you know, Mexican cuisine isn't one type of food. I mean, there's so many regional variations all across the country that the food in the Yucatan is nothing like the food in Michoacan. You know, there's some, there's some similarities in a lot of things, but the, but in each region, the flavors of that region are based on the ingredients, you know, the, the, you know, plants and animals that were indigenous to those areas. And so, you know, if you live in the coast and in the, in the Yucatan, you're going to have lots of seafood, lots of fish, um, and northern Mexico, you know, beef, beef rules. Beef is, you know, I always, I always refer to the cuisine of northern Mexico as, as burnt meat and beer. And it's phenomenal burnt, you know, as everything's grilled, uh, it's incredibly tasty. But it's so different than, say, the food of the Yucatan. Yes. Are you referring to like carne asada? And yeah, carne asada because every weekend I lived in, in Monterrey and every, which is northern Mexico, a couple hours south of the U.S. border. Um, but every weekend it was a carne asada. That's what you did. And if you didn't have, you know, meat with, if you didn't have meat with every meal, you were going to, you know, be, be sickly and unhealthy. <laughs> because you must have meat with every meal. Oh, that's fantastic. And see, that's, that's a great way of, 
or how I grew up because I was on a dairy farm. So we ate a lot of meat, mm-hmm. but we also had pigs. So we ate a lot of pork dishes yeah. as well. So, so you've been cooking, you've learned all the, how to make all these recipes. You have this great blog. Is there a Mexican recipe now that is your personal favorite? Um, I guess I love making pozole. I have to admit, I don't make it that often. You know, it's sort of more of a party thing when you make up a big, huge pot of it because you're going to have people over, you know, Christmas, New Year's. Um, but I, I love, you know, that's one that I really love to make. I have a, on the, on the blog, it's called, you know, I have it as a red enchilada sauce, but it's really, it's really kind of a, a mole rojo that it's, um, and I always refer to it as kind of an everyday mole because it's not like the 30, 40 ingredient mole poblano that takes days to put together. That's, that's one that I like to cook and I have on hand pretty often is the, is the, what the, is the mole rojo or the, the red enchilada sauces. I have it listed on the site. Um, those are a couple of my favorites Okay. that I always come back to those. Yeah. I love pasole. Absolutely love it. Um, and like you said, I don't make it very often either. It's primarily for holidays cause it is, it's pretty labor intensive to make it. But it's so good. So yeah. good. And I also like to make a, uh, it's actually pozole, pozole de camarón, shrimp pozole. And that I learned to make in Puerto Vallarta. You know, they never had that. Yeah, it's, it's fantastic. But, you know, Puerto Vallarta, it's on the coast, uh, um, you know, lots of seafood, lots of shrimp. And the, it actually goes really, really well together. The flavors of the pozole, the broth goes really well with shrimp. So is that recipe on your food blog? <laughs> Please tell me. I, have, I don't have the shrimp pozole on there. I have, a, I have a pork pozole recipe, but you could actually pretty easily adapt it, um, substitute the pork for shrimp. Okay. And then I, and then I like to cook the, I like to cook the, because um, you can buy like the, the the shell from the sh- the shrimp and you can actually the dried sh- uh, shell and you can cook that then in the broth and that imparts kind of the a shrimp flavor plus you have the, the the shrimp itself okay i think i'm gonna try this i've never had it before but it sounds delicious i love shrimp and i love pozole so yes I it's a really try. great you know so it's basically it's pozole but instead of pork or chicken uh it's with shrimp Okay, and it sounds like you're making a fish stock for it as well then. It's a little bit. Yeah, it's kind of, I guess it would be kind of like making a fish stock. Okay. All right, well, I'm going to try that. All right, now I need to know, like, who is taking all your pictures on your site? Because they are so beautiful and on your Instagram feed as well. Okay, pictures on the website. uh, I work with a photographer. His name is Andres Carnaya. And Andres is originally from Cuernavaca. Um you know, just south of Mexico City. And um, so he was born and raised in Cuernavaca, but he uh, he spent about 15 years in the Bay Area. And he, you know, he had a cafe in, in the in San Francisco area. But he's back. We met in San Miguel de Allende, uh, where he's living now. And, you know, he goes, he's back and forth between, you know, he's back and forth between... Um, the U S and, and San Miguel. And so, but we met in San Miguel. And so he's got, he has a food bent because, you know, he, he had a cat, he had a cafe at one point in, in the Bay area. And so, um, and, and, you know, some of the recipes on the website are mine. Some of the recipes are his, you know, um, kind of coming, uh, from his mother or a variation on the food that he grew up eating. That's lovely because the photos are really beautiful. They're very, very well done and very appetizing. When I looked at them, I'm like, oh, yes, I would like some of that and some of this. So they're very well done. Oh, thanks. Now, how long ago did you start your business and has it been easy to to grow it and to expand? Yeah, I mean, as as... It's been quite a few years now. You know, I kind of posted, uh, you know, a little bit here, a little bit there. And over time, you know, um, 
learning a little bit more how to put it together, making a little better. And it really kind of took off after, after I met Andres. And, um, you know, so, so I could, you know, I can take all right pictures, but you know, his, his pictures are so much better. <laughs> so I think, I think once we started working together on the blog, that's when it really kind of took off more and it's been pretty organic. We, we work on it steadily and, you know, as traffic grows and I think, um, people seem to like what we do and, you know, it, you know, every, every year we have, you know, quite a bit more traffic than we had before. And, and so, um, you know, it wasn't, you know, we, we did a, a, you know, a huge push to get it started. It's kind of developed. We've kind of figured out it has, I would say the website has a little more of a voice now, you know, it has a certain look to it. Um, it's done a certain way and it took us a little bit of time to kind of figure that out. You know, just the tone Very of the posts, um, the style of the photos is I can look back in the photos when we first started working together and I would say they're not nearly as nice as now because we didn't really have, you know, we, we hadn't kind of defined our look and we're trying out different, different things. And so now the pictures are looking so much better. They're absolutely gorgeous. I'm like, Oh, I know it's, it's definitely a journey. And um, I know on my, just with the work that I've been doing too, the, I still, I need a photographer. I'm still trying to take my photos. So someday I'll get there. Um, but your photos are very gorgeous. Okay. So what's been, so what's been um, some of the biggest surprises about your blog? I think one of the biggest things is like how much people react to it. And, you know, when people, um, they're really appreciative. Like we have, I think we, we have a lot of readers who um, maybe they grew up and either, you know, their, their parents or grandparents cooked a lot of these dishes, but they didn't really learn to make them as they were growing up. And now we, we get a fair amount of, uh, you know, people writing to us, you know, Oh, you know, thank you so much for the, the, the enchilada sauce, because I was, I've been looking and that's exactly how my grandmother used to make the, the sauce that, um, when, when she would cook, that was, you know, that was my grandmother's dish. That's and, cute. and so, so, and kind of the strong feelings that come out, but it's, it, I think, uh, you know, that's sort of a lot of, you know, memories, home and family and childhood. Um, and when you when you eat that food, it, when they, you know, they eat the food, it's like, wow, oh, that's mm -hmm. what I've been looking for. So that the, that surprised me the the how strong the reaction is to to some of the recipes. That's absolutely beautiful. That's the food memories are really important to us and that, that's how they connect us. Yeah. And I would say, if, you know, in Mexican culture, food is such a big part of life. It is. And, you know, so, so, you know, I, I don't think, I mean, I, I grew up in Southern California and I, you know, I don't feel, you know, Southern California, when I was a kid, you know, there wasn't that food culture that the way people talk about food in Mexico, you know, and, and I remember when I first got to Durango, everybody would ask you the question is, you know, uh, ¿Qué comiste? What did you eat? <laughs> what did you eat for lunch? And it's like, why are people asking me all the time what I ate for lunch? What do they care? You know, but that was... And, you know, because coming from, you know, rushing around, you know, work and school in Southern California, you know, normally it was probably, you know, a burger while I was driving. <laughs> and so, so going back to it, it's, you know, the, those food memories. And, and if you grew up in, in, a, in a Mexican family, it's, it is a different food plays such an important role. And there's such it's strong that. memories. Yes. And, and I know that in my... Yeah. And in my home, it was as soon as we finished lunch or while we were eating lunch, it's like, what are we having for dinner? <laughs> it's like, it's yes, just exactly. A, it's a constant theme, a constant conversation. And one of the, when I lost my mom, one of the biggest voids in my life was who was I going to talk to about food every day? Cause I spoke to her every single day. So mm -hmm. that's been one of the 
the best things about me having a podcast is that I get to talk to people like you and others every week about food. So it's, it's pretty fantastic. So what, what has been um, one of the, some, or some of the, the biggest challenges that you faced? Um, challenges in what sense? Like, like, as far as like plan. having, yeah, having your business and, um, sometimes, you know, it's, it's finding the time to do it, you know, cause it is, it is fairly time consuming. I, I enjoy doing it, but a lot of time, you know, you, uh, and, and I'm sure you know this when sometimes when you sit down on the computer, you're going to have to spend a lot of time on the computer and it looks and somebody you think, oh, it's such it's just a post, but you know, that took so many hours to put together. And yes. as I say, you know, time, time is probably the, the, um, probably the biggest issue because I don't do the blog full time. Right. I can relate to that. <laughs> Most definitely. So I believe that you have an, a pretty exciting class online that's going to start soon. Yeah, actually. Talk? Yeah. So um, we are launching now uh, an online Mexican cooking school. And we're working with uh, a chef from Ensenada, his name is Juan Antonio Husong. And so we're going to right now on the blog, we have, you know, we have um, photos of step by step, but we're actually going to, um, you know, he's going to do full video, um, you know, full videos, step by step videos from the recipes. We're actually breaking. Um, we're doing the videos in, in two formats. There's going to be one long form video where you can watch him cook the whole dish. Um, and you know, we can talk the whole backstory behind the dish and he's got a, so many great dishes. He actually grew up on a, a ranch outside of Ensenada on the, on the, you know, sort of Northern Pacific coast of Mexico, uh, a couple hours South of Tijuana. And then, we're, so there'll be a long form video where he's talking and you can watch the whole dish from start to finish. And there'll be a short form video, which will be mu a much quicker, uh, how to that you can follow along you know, like a, a two minute video that you can watch when you're actually, you put it on your iPad and you can be in the kitchen and, and watch the real quick steps so you can put the dish together. So uh, we're shooting for um, the first phase of the school. It should be ready early to mid November. That's very exciting. And I think it's going to be really, really cool. It's sort of, you know, the next next step in what we're doing, I think, you know, I'm kind of excited about it. it's like a big jump in quality of content and, you know, going, going even deeper into it with a lot more explanation of the dishes than we have on the website in the blog post. That is really exciting, Douglas. So tell me this, will you have to register for the classes or will they just be available so you can come and watch anytime? Uh, How's you'll, it'll, it will be, um, there will be a registration for it in fact um, okay. and the i can the website if i can give you i can tell your listeners uh where where to find it um oh and, please do okay so so the cooking school is called mastering mexican cooking so if you go to mastering mexican cooking.com um Right now, at this point, there's there's just a, there's a, a landing page where p people who are interested can leave their email, and we'll give them notification when it's um, when when the school is live. Now, and if anyone's listening, you know, after after mid November, so then the actual the site will be live. That is so exciting. Do you, do you know what's the first dish going to be already? Or I know what the first course okay. is, and it's actually going to be uh, a Mexican salsa course. Right, We're planning on have approximately six salsas made with fresh chiles and six salsas made with dried, with dried chiles. And they're, you know, they're both very different styles. So, and, and, and the idea is there's kind of a sequence, you know, start with the most basics and get to the more, um, more elaborate, um, salsas and sauces, but it should be a dozen, a dozen salsas. And that's the, that's the first component. 
Oh, I love it. What a, that is a really good place to start. Right. And so, and if you were, and actually, and I think for me, for Mexican cooking, I find when I cook Mexican, I cook differently than say, if I'm cooking, you know, my favorite dishes that I grew up with in, in, in California, stuff that we used to eat at home. I find when I cook Mexican food, it's usually, okay, well, I have some salsa verde. What goes with salsa verde? And cooking in the U.S. is, well, I have some chicken or, you know, I want to make a chicken dish. What chicken dish am I going to make? It, everything to me comes from the salsa. Okay, now I have some salsa verde or some salsa roja or I have this or that. And, okay, what can I do with it? You know, what goes with the salsa? It's a really good place for people to start. It's a fantastic place. I agree with you. There's a, I, I don't have any of my salsa fresca right now in the fridge. So I'm like, oh, I can't make so and so and so and so until I make more salsa. Yeah, exactly. You got to make some more salsa. And yeah. so, you know, if you don't, if you don't have some kind of salsa, it, you, that's such an integral part of so many Mexican dishes that you kind of, you know, you kind of don't have Mexican cuisine without the salsa. I agree. And the other thing about making your own salsa, at least in my experience, it's not that hard and it's very inexpensive. It's super inexpensive. It's really, you know, for if you're working with dried chilies, if you can make one, one dish with dried chilies, you can probably, you know, one salsa, you can probably make every single one of them because most of the techniques are pretty similar. It's different combinations of chiles or different order of cooking the ingredients or different ways, but um, it's really, making your own salsa is really easy. And it it's, is. And it's a great way to eat your vegetables. You know, <laughs> yeah. Be good, what, you know, a, a salsa, a fred, you know, fresh salsa or salsa fresca that's, you know, it's tomatoes, onions, chiles, uh, kind of the base, a little bit of cilantro. So, you know, you can eat, you can eat well, it's, it's really healthy and it's, and it's, it is super inexpensive and it doesn't take that long to make it. You just get, you have, it's like anything that when you're cooking, you know, any, any cuisine, once you get the basics down and you kind of, you know, the first couple of times it feels really overwhelming and I don't know if I, you know, it's, but you do it, you know, three to six times and it's like, oh, okay, yeah, I got, I got the routine down. I know what to do now. And I've got my, my, my go-to recipes and go-to techniques. The other thing I always, I agree with you. The other thing I always tell people is invest in a good knife. Yes. There's lots of chopping and it's kind of a game changer when you have a good sharp knife. Yes. You know, so it does make a, it makes a huge difference. It makes a huge difference in, in how fast it takes you and, yeah, so that's well. That is super exciting. Very, very exciting that 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 you're doing that. So I will be watching. I want to see what you're up to, and it sounds amazing. Yeah, if if, if it goes as planned, it will be amazing. <laughs> that's awesome. So. so, is there anything else that you want to share with our listeners who might be thinking about starting a blog or starting their own business that you've learned along the way that you'd like to share? Just start. Just, you know, start. just start doing something. I mean, I, we, we recently changed, you know, it's, I, myself included, it's always, you know, well, I have to learn more. I don't know enough. Oh, I need to analyze the situation better. And, you know, it's the, it's the analysis paralysis. You know, mm-hmm. if I look at how this blog for the Mexican food journal started, you know, it was, it was a little dish of salsa. The only photo was a little dish of salsa that I took with my iPhone, and it was a pretty bad, pretty bad picture. And you know, but I posted it. I got it started, and then you know, the next one was a little better. And now, years later, you know, not too long ago, it you know, said you know that that recipe has a little bit of traction, and so you know, let's let's do it right. But mostly for for starting is just get started. You know, do something. And it'll grow from there. Uh, generally, you know, it, it's not a massive success overnight, but if you keep plugging away at it, um, it you'll have success um, eventually. Thank you, Douglas. That's really good advice because I think it is 
I think it's a little intimidating to get started sometimes. Yeah, and everybody thinks there's so much to learn and so much to do, and it's kind of you know, pick pick a thing and try it out, and then you know, sort of that one step, and you do a couple more, you build a little bit of momentum, you start to understand, you know, kind of all the moving parts of whatever you're trying to do, and it gets easier over time. Well, thank you so much um, for being with us and continued success. And like I said, I will be following you on Instagram as well as visiting your site and I'm very excited for you with these online cooking courses. They sound amazing. Well, thank you. And yeah, thanks for having me. And it was fun chatting and yeah, I hope everybody tries, tries a Mexican dish. Thank you. I want to thank our listeners for joining us. Please visit our YouTube channel where you can learn to make guacamole, chimichangas, mocajetes de queso y chorizo pontido, crunchy tacos, and so much more, and private message us if you need any help. Remember to add the most important ingredient to every recipe you make, your love, and as my mama always said to me as we said our goodbyes, que Dios te bendiga, may God bless you. Thank you for tuning in to Molly Mama Cooking with Love.